guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mosin Blowers! Good morning. Super hot day. Past couple of days, it's been super hot. Yesterday, it was so hot, I couldn't even stand to be out here for more than five minutes. I said, the hell with it, forget it, I'm not doing a video today. But then, uh, if I keep putting it off, summer's not gonna end just because I say so. Still gotta move on and clear my garage full of projects that I need to co um, complete. Uh, this is a Kohler Courage 19, although it's made up of parts from like a 20 and an 18 and a 19, you know. I uh, rebuilt this engine a while back. I believe it had a blown connecting rod and then from another engine I got from Nick from the uh, that had a good connecting rod but a bad synchro balancer. So this had a good synchro balancer, but a bad connecting rod. So I basically took that connecting rod and I think the piston and some other stuff and I put one together. I have no idea if it'll run or not. As a matter of fact, I have a sticker here that you can see that I did the valve clearances wrong. It's supposed to be a five intake, seven exhaust. I believe I did seven intake, five exhaust. So the sticker here is to remind me to redo the valve clearances and it has no oil in it. Uh, I don't remember anything else about the carburetor. I almost feel like the backing was glued together because I had a cracked one. And so since this has been sitting in my garage all this time, I actually have accumulated a couple of backings. These are the spacer backings for the uh, carburetor. So I have two good ones that are not cracked. <laughs> one has this, one doesn't, so I don't know. But uh, these are here in case I need it. Uh, I'll eventually take this apart and see. Um, the reason why I need to take this engine apart again is when I put this engine back together again, as you know, the Kohler Courages are twin cam, two plastic cams. Well, I've taken apart probably five of these things because uh, Nick from Bellport gives them to me. And something very strange about this one. Just like that crazy Kohler spark plug for the uh, XT675 push mower engines, <laughs> this one had me scratching my head a little bit too. The two cams in here differ differently from the majority of the cams that I've seen for the Kohler Courage. It had, it looks smaller for some reason. It just looked different. And I'll show you guys when I take these two cams out and replace them. But uh, when I put this back, it it didn't have uh, an ACR, a compression release lever, right? And so that was one thing that I, I said, you know, this is probably not gonna run without an ACR. You know, it's probably not gonna start easily, you know? Um, so since then, I actually have gotten two more engines from Nick that had good cams. This is the exhaust side, because it says exhaust side, right? And it has a ACR, although that doesn't seem like it's right. Okay, so the ACR is right here. This is the lever. You can pull it out easily. It's held together by this little spring. You have to twist it so that it catches on this little dot there, just with the right tension. And when this springs like that smoothly, you'll notice that uh, this part right here is where the centrifugal force of the engine spinning from the starter spins this so that that's flush. Because that's flush, it allows the engine to spin uh, easily because there's nothing catching it. Uh, and then I really don't know why it would slow down to allow it to, to bump the you know uh, cam, but... <laughs> I'm not an engineer, but I know that you probably need that, you know? Um, so if you look at that, that's the way it is. It's a good cam. This is the other side, the intake one, but I feel like it rattles a little. You know, it's not solid. It feels like it needs to be tightened or something like that, but it's not. I guess it's fine like that when it spins. Uh, I have another set just like it. You can see this lever came off and you just put it in this hole over here 
this catches. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put this on real quick so you guys can see. This catches that. Stick it in the hole. That's what you said. And there you go. It, that's how easy it is to install the ACR for this. Same thing, see? Although this seems like it catches a little. That one's smoother. So I'm not going to use this one, but I, I believe these are identical. But I'll use this one because it's smoother. This one doesn't rattle. So since this one doesn't rattle, maybe I'll use this one. See? This one rattles. I'm going to compare these two and just make sure they're exactly the same. What's confusing me a little bit is this. So you see these two here? They're more orange in color than these. These look more yellow than this. You notice? And coincidentally, uh, this says exhaust. This says intake, so I'm going to need one of those. And I'm not sure whether or not the, the release, the, the ACR, needs to be on the intake one or the exhaust one because it fits on both, either or. This one here is also is an exhaust, and this one here is an exhaust also. Wait a minute. Oh, they both say that. So I just need to know whether or not I should use the, the one that rattles. This one, the orange ones rattle. Both of them do. But they seem to be in better shape. So should I use the non-rattling ones or the rattling ones? I, I guess I'll make a decision when I open it up and see how the situation is. Because it's so hot, <laughs> I just did a review on this thing. It's a uh, rechargeable cordless, hands-free neck fan for when it's hot. This is the highest speed. It's from Taurus. I just did a review. If you guys are interested in reviews, I do my reviews on Saturday and Sundays. It really actually works. The thing does sell for $89.99 though. I think a lot of that money has to do with the box. It's like the nicest box I've ever seen for something like this. I mean, they, you gotta have spent at least $10 on just the box, you know what I mean? Anyway, um, I've run this for about, it came fully charged. I've run it for about, uh, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. Just gonna keep it running on top speed, see how long it lasts. Anyway, I'm gonna take this top cover off uh, to access the sump cover on the Kohler Courages only that I've ever seen, that the sump cover is actually on the top. So theoretically, if you had this mounted on your lawn tractor and you needed to do top end engine work, you don't have to remove the engine. You could just take the top off and work on it. And I'll show you. We'll take this cover off and then the sump bolts off of the cover. Uh, when I put this together, I used RTV silicone. So it might be difficult for me to take the cover off, but we'll find out. It has no um, oil in it. And it looks like they're uh, 5 16 bolts all, right, all the way around. So uh, this is my Milwaukee M12 uh, 12 volt lithium ion impact driver. I got it uh, from my friend Robert Nighthawk when he came to visit. I traded it with him uh, for that green lawn boy lawnmower. Anyway, it's pretty cool. Now when I got it, right, it had a battery like this. I have since bought this on eBay. This is a six amp uh, 12 volt lithium ion. So six amp is the, the main part of the batteries on the bottom here. And also I liked it because, you know, from this, you can't like stand it up or anything. You know what I mean? This one has the stand, you know, so that it could sit like that. You know what I mean? So. It was $20 on eBay. I think it's a, it's a copied battery, you know, but it seems to work just fine. Anyway, when I got this battery, I went to go charge it for the first time on the charger and the charger wouldn't work. <laughs> so I'm like, oh crap, do I have to go now buy a battery charger? Anyway, I watched a couple of YouTube videos and if you spray some contact cleaner on the contacts, it'll work again. I didn't even do that. I just blew into the contacts and started to work. <laughs> 
amazing. Anyway, um, this battery that Robert gave me, it, it never charged and it was very weak. It would never hold a charge, so I tried to I tried to take it apart and stuff, but it doesn't work. So I got a new battery and it's fully charged. So it has a 5 16th um, socket on there. Is that it? Is that it? Just four? Could have sworn it was more than four. There's the cover. Oh boy. We do have to remove the flywheel. It doesn't take a 5 8 because it has some play. It's a 15 millimeter. That was easy. Of course it's not gonna come off. Gonna have to get a sledgehammer and a crowbar. Put this back in here again. Couple of threads. Push down on it. No, not, leverage is not good, but I'll try it anyway. I think that did it. There we go. The towel way always works. And there is the flywheel. Stator. Do you think I could take the sump cover off without taking off the stator? Can't take the sump cover off without taking off the throttle bracket either. Man, this is going to be more work than I thought. That's it. I quit. Wow. Well, the eights should be 10 millimeter. It is 10 millimeter. Get over. All right. So. Uh, Looks like I can keep the uh, magneto on. We'll just disconnect it. I'm gonna keep the stator on for now because it looks like it's just mounted onto the sump cover. But definitely the definitely the throttle bracket has to come off. I have to do that first. It's Torx. I haven't done engine work in a long time. It's kind of refreshing to step away from the regular stuff and to do a little bit of different things, you know. So here we go. We're going to take the sump bolts out. Now, if you guys know the Kohler Courages, what's infamous about them blowing is these sump bolts. Um, over time, they get loose. While the engine's running, the sump bolts will come up, off, loose, hit the flywheel, and mess it up that way. Also, their connecting rods are made out of potato chips. I found about six or seven Kohler Courages, mostly given to me by Nick from Bellport. Every one of them either had a blown connecting rod or um, synchro balancer. That's a lot of sump bolts. A lot. A ton. So I think I got them all. I'm gonna take a little hammer and just try to break the seal of the... Um... Of the RTV might be kind of difficult.
I had to disconnect the uh, stator wire from the voltage regulator and it still won't come off. It's been fiddling with this for a while now. <laughs> I hope I don't break anything. Just, and I'm not prying hard, fellas. I'm just, I mean, it's like right there, you know? why it's so hard. So she said. Should I have taken the starter off? It's like an inch out already. I don't know what's holding it. Am I sweating to death? Absolutely. Do I want to go inside and lie down? Sure. This will never get done. You know, I have to take this and put it on the floor. Just wiggled it just a little bit. And there we go. There's the sump cover. All right, here we go. So that's what it looks like. Um, I know I'm in trouble already because I need to get a washer that goes here, that goes on top. And uh, I don't have one. I have to go look through my parts and stuff to find it. But I believe the ACR goes on this side here. The dots have to line up perfectly here. Intake, and if I turn this, I want to line it up before I do anything, just to, just so I'm well acclimated as to how I did it, you know? Oh, the holes don't seem to line up. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if you guys can see or not, but if you look at, there's here, there's a dot there and a dot there and has to line up with this dot and that dot. Uh, I want to say that the ACR is on this side. Um, not 100%. I think this is the intake, right? Intake, dot, dot. Exhaust, dot, dot. These are lined up. When I took that cover off just now, I think something moved or something and it wasn't lined up. So this engine would not have started anyway. So look, I'm going to show you how easy it is to remove these cams. Now look at this cam here, right? This is the, well, it says exhaust 22. Look at the difference. I mean, while the size of the cam is the same, right? Look at the width of it, how deep it goes. This is so thin and this is so thick. It's like, it's like double the width of it, you know, the thickness. And as you can see on this cam, there's no place for a uh, compression release. Yes, there's a hole here, right, for it, but it only has that split there. The split is different, see? So I guess that had they had a different type of compression release for this. But anyway, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take that out. And I'm gonna put this one in. But I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Uh, I haven't decided whether or not I'm gonna use the orange one or the yellow one? The, the, the yellow ones don't have any play in it. The orange ones have play in it, so I don't think I want to use that. And the exhaust one comes out very easily too. And as you can see, this says intake on it. <laughs> I might have to go back inside and look at my uh, phone 
and uh, get it right because this says intake. I could have sworn the intake was on this side. Not 100% sure, but I'll, I'll figure it out. So basically I just wanted to, it's a pain to get this one in because this one you could take out. This one's stuck in there with the oil pump. But everything else looks okay. I just need to line everything up. Of course, I'd probably have to... Oh, that actually is a gasket. Uh, you know, I just RTV'd over the gasket. It held really well. Anyway, so I'm going to go do some research. See exactly which is the intake, which is the exhaust, how they line up and stuff. Uh, this thing on my neck is still going strong. So I've cleaned the gasket area here by using a razor blade and cleaning off the excess gaskets. I'm going to put another layer of RTV silicone. The uh, gasket on the sump cover itself is pretty good. So just another layer of RTV will be fine after I torque them down. So I decided I was going to use the orange ones that have a little bit of rattle to them because the ones that don't rattle is kind of damaged from the trauma. These gears here, the teeth, are rubbed out a little bit and kind of melted over here. So it kind of warps it a little. So this is not exactly the best shape. I'd rather have the sharp teeth and it have a little play than, than use the damaged teeth, you know? Being it's plastic, it's pretty important. So I'm gonna use the orange ones and I watched Tarrell's video and he showed us uh, that actually this side with the compression release is actually the exhaust. So I would line up the exhaust dots to that dot there, right? And I would line up the this is the other orange one I'm gonna use. It says intake on it. So when I put this on, I'm gonna line up this intake dot with the dot on the camshaft. I'm gonna line them up like that. It uh, takes a little bit to weasel it in there. And then, like I said, I was missing the, uh, I was missing the washer that goes there. Wait, why does that not even go in? Oh. I went to the shed and found the washer. Perfect. So we're good to go. I'm gonna line this stuff up and try to weasel this back on here again after I get some RTV silicone. I just wanna make sure that this is exactly right. Okay, there you go. There's a uh, cleaner look at it. Exhaust, two dots. Got my washer here, compression release. It's so sloppy. See that? If this is raised a little, it won't go back. But if it's just level, like push it in like this, it'll go back. So I think when it's spinning and stuff, it does its own thing, you know? So that's lined up well. This is the intake. So the intake is on the uh, left side. Exhaust is on the right side. I always thought that this was the intake which is probably why I messed up the clearances. <laughs> so now I know why. Well, I always knew that the compression release was on the right side. I just didn't know it was the exhaust. So it says exhaust on the bottom. Like this one, see? That one doesn't say it. <clears throat> see, this one says exhaust on it right there, EX. This one says intake on it. See how these cams are different? Very different. I've never seen these before. But either way, I think I have the right ones on here now. So, like, once again, exhaust is on the right side, lined up, intake, lined up the dots, so that should be perfect, right? It has a little bit of play in them. This is the synchro balancer. This little part here goes into the hole in the sump. Uh, I'm going to put some silicone right around here and then try to mate that cover back on here again uh, as you can see I have this is a the back spacer plating for the uh, carburetor as you can see it's been mended and fixed I'm gonna replace it with one of those good ones there so I'll have to remove this later after I do the clearances
So I've been at this for a while. I uh, did the valve lash, five one thousandths on the uh, intake, seven one thousandths on the exhaust. It was really, really like off. So I was wondering maybe I'm missing two caps on there, you know, on top of the um, valves. So I had uh, two other, I had two other heads from Ricola Courage, and I took them, the both the uh, valve covers off to see if they had the caps. These don't have the caps either, so I don't think they have the caps. So I don't know, it's a little hinky to be honest with you. Uh, I had another head here, did the same thing, took it apart. They didn't have the caps, so I guess they don't have caps, you know? So we'll just see what happens. I mean, I, I don't have high confidence that this engine will run right because it just, I don't know, it seems hinky, you know? Uh, I'm a little confused about how this throttle linkage goes. There's like uh, two linkages. One's uh, one's for the governor that's attached to the governor. There's also a spring that goes onto another thing. I I don't remember. I'm not sure. You know, uh, when I put the flywheel back on again, right? It was missing the key. There's no key in the keyway, so I had to put a key in there. It's weird. Either I lost it somewhere when I took it off, or it didn't have it. Impossible, right? Did I put it on maybe without it? I'm a little worried about this. It's a little kind of hard to turn. <laughs> I know there's no oil in it, right? But I mean, it, I, I'm using kind of a lot of force to turn this, you know, and there's no spark plug in the thing. So uh, what I got to do now is uh, I have to replace the backing, the spacer plate for the carburetor because this one's cracked. So I need to replace that. I need to figure out how the throttle plate goes on here with the linkages it's just really confusing and this this engine stand has had it it's about to fall over all right i'll have to use another kind of engine stand or something anyway uh i'm done i've been out here for like three hours doing what i'm not really sure <laughs> oh yeah swapping out the twin cams and adding a compression release lever and the washer and putting on a new gasket because I took the sump off. Putting everything back together again, but now I can't figure out how the throttle plate works. Hoping that the valves are right uh, and we're gonna change the uh, backing to the carburetor here. I'll do that on the next episode because it's 95 degrees and I just feel like hell. You know what I mean? hell uh this thing's still running strong on the highest speed three hours that's pretty amazing uh it helps <laughs> anyway thanks for joining me on today's episode we'll see you guys next time on mowers and blowers see you guys next time on mowers and blowers Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers really appreciate all the support also to keep the videos coming every day support the channel bye